Yeah. Uh, I hope it is, it is visible now. Sir, visible, just yes, sir. Uh, full screen, sir. Please make yeah. it full. Yeah, it's full, full screen already. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, so, it's, thank you very much. Uh, the topic that is given to me today is test of statistical significance using Excel and SPSS. So, at the beginning itself, I want to make it very clear that this topic is a big topic, basically. And we know that uh, to learn test of statistical significance and concept of statistics, it, it requires at least six months training, uh, basic training. But we will try to cover some of the uh, important aspects of uh, statistical significance test. Why do we go for statistics, first of all? And we'll try to uh, look at some of the basic tests of significance using Excel, basically. Why Excel? Because Excel is accessible to most of us. And even SPSS, SPSS is a paid software. So even one month, uh, one year subscription cost nearly four to six lakh rupees. But most of the institutions, they buy it. So I'll be also demonstrating some of the examples using SPSS. Okay. So we will start with the uh, topic. So what is statistics basically? Now, when we talk about statistics, we must understand that uh, it's the science of collecting, analyzing, presenting, and interpreting the data. Okay, uh, why do we need it? We need it for decision making. Uh, decision making, such as if you if you are using some of some some drugs in some of the trials, then many a times we are interested whether our drug is actually working or not, and if it is working. What is its efficacy? How much different it is from the uh, random group or the control group where you have not treated your animals with the drug? So such kind of uh, uh, so such such type of uh, situations arise every now and then, especially in the research area where you want to compare between two or more than two groups. You want to compare their means or variances, or you want to know. What is the difference of this particular whether the uh, whether the sample that you have obtained from the, from the population is actually truly representing your population or not? So there are several uh, issues with our data, and and that's why we need some decision making aspects where statistics is very important too. So if there are two or more than two different paths and you are stuck up, where should I go actually? at this particular moment, then statistics is the only tool which comes handy. And then uh, why the statistics is actually required for the researchers? Statistics is a tool which is required for researchers for formulating and testing your hypothesis. Okay, not only that, but when, when you conduct your experiment and before you conduct your experiment, you need to have a good idea about the test of significance that you will be using in your analysis. Let me tell you very frankly that many times what happens, we already conduct experiments. We already have our data and then we go to a statistician. At that particular moment, a very big problem comes because now if you have not consulted a statistician before start of the experiment and you have obtained your data, then it is basically a post-mortem kind of thing. Okay. So many times you do not have a, a proper design of experiment. You do not have proper uh, data. And then you want to have some statistical test to be applied to your data. Okay. And that, that creates a lot of mess. That is one of the important reasons why our papers are not published in good uh, research journals. Only uh, if you screen across, if you scan, if you scan the research papers that are published in good, good research journals, you, you will find that the kind of work they do and the kind of work we do is not much different. It's, it's almost same, okay? But the kind of statistical design they put into their research is really good. However, most of the times we fail in that particular aspect. Why? Because we have not thought about the kind of experiment that we are going to design, okay? So the design of experiment is very, very important. How to present the data, okay? So that it should be understood by the layman, that is also very, very important. Okay, not only that, but once you have your result, whether you have the confidence to present your result properly or not, 
Now, why I'm saying this? You just, just, just uh, say, for example, you have a mean of 100. Your data has mean of 100. Okay. However, the data range from 10 to 2000. Okay. Then the range for the data is very, very high. That leads to very, very high standard error. Okay. So you will not have enough confidence to, to, to tell to the public that my mean of my particular data is 100. Not only this, but also statistics is important for researchers, especially for predicting the future. Predicting the future in what aspect? We, we can predict the future, especially using regression equations for uh, understanding or for, uh, say, for example, you, ha you have an experiment like a uh, plot of uh, different agriculture plots, OK? And you are putting different concentrations of uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, OK? And then you can predict, OK, that what dose of my fertilizers can have, how much impact on the yield of uh, yield of heat or jar from that particular plot. Okay, so predicting outcome of the experiment is possible with the help of the statistics. However, we must understand that all tools which are available in our statistical analysis uh, 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 courses are not applicable for all kind of data. Okay, why? Because data can have different types of uh, presentation okay so what kind of distribution our data has uh, it has a lot of uh, impact on what kind of analysis you will be using for your data you can see here that human height human height it, it is a normally distributed data so human height if you if you plot that data you will definitely see that the data has a normal distribution okay it has a bell shaped curve however percentile or ratio data is never normally distributed Say, for example, you have a, a nominal data, like only two uh, classes and only one threshold, like sex, male or female, or deceased or healthy. So you have only two classes with one threshold. Again, this is a binomial distribution of the data. And you cannot use the test which you used for normally distributed data. So this particular data, nominal uh, distributed data, or even the ordinal where you have ranks, you cannot use t-test. You cannot use Z test, okay. You cannot use ANOVA. So there are different types of tests for different types of the data if the data is distributed differently. Okay. Sometimes it looks bizarre, but let me tell you, unless and until we do not have good understanding of the distribution of the data, we cannot apply a good statistical test of significance. Okay. Now, again, whatever data you have, you must present it in a simple way so that it can be interpreted easily by anyone, even by the person who doesn't have any knowledge about statistical analysis. Okay. Now, just for the sake of example, we will, we will look into the data of 48 women for their height. As I already told you, human height is a normally distributed data. So what do we expect? We expect that its shape, shape of the distribution of the data, the frequency distribution will have normal distribution. Okay. So most of the data points will be in and around the mean and very few data points will be on the two tails. Okay. We can also study the properties of the data, the particularly this 48 women's height sample data and its summary statistics, like what is the mean of the data? What is the median? What is the mode? And what kind of distribution variance, etc. it has. Okay, so we will just start doing it. So I already supplied the Excel file uh, to the uh, to Dr. Uh, uh, Ali sir yesterday. And if you have access to that, then you can open it on your computer. Okay, but let me tell you, Microsoft Excel is one of the very, uh, uh, I should say, it, it is one of the best uh, statistical analysis package for day-to-day uh, -day analysis, okay? However, you need to activate the options for statistical analysis, okay, in your data. Uh, just a second.
sorry for the disturbance so uh, what we need to do we need to activate your excel options basically so we need to go to the excel options okay there is add ins column in the excel options and in the add ins we need to activate the analysis tool pack okay and in this analysis tool pack you can add in the analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack vba once this feature is installed you can analyze your data using microsoft excel so now we were talking about the human height data okay so human height data basically it has normal distribution and it 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 uh, we need to look at the uh, its its uh, shape okay so it should look like this okay however we will just see using actual excel how uh, our data looks like okay so i'll i'll share the excel file so i i hope you can uh, see this excel file now can you see this excel file no sir Anyone? i'm not receiving any response so anyway i'll continue with this so this is excel file and in this excel file basically we have a data on 48 women so it starts from 3.9 feet doctor uh, yes, sorry sir. sorry doctor uh, your excel is not visible my excel is not visible yes the <laughs> excel file is not visible it was already shared to all the participants okay so stop share now is it visible now is it visible sir uh, sir it's it under is sharing it's under sharing okay So once it is shared, please let me know. Not yet. It's written that your screen sharing is paused. Uh, Doctor Amit. Yes, sir. Uh, can you help Doctor Gowne to share his Excel Excel sheet? Uh, actually sir he had already started sharing uh, it will he is on the right track uh, only because of network he, he has already started sharing because it is reflecting that started sharing okay so okay. he is already on the midway sir please help okay okay i think it is network issue basically yes yes because you are, you have rightly shared hmm okay or what we can do is uh, i'll stop the share i will com com continue with the uh, sir PPT. sir do one thing sir sir you stop share open the excel sheet first and then start sharing yeah open yeah, the excel okay. sheet which you want to show right first open it and then then you share when okay. you will put a uh, click on share the blocks will be there and then you select particular block excel sheet and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lower left side there will be one lower right side there will be option called a share yes yeah, yeah, yeah. now it started done yeah. is it is it visible yes visible visible okay fine so now you see here that we have a data on 48 women it's in the column a okay so it starts with 3.9 feet and ends with 6.10 okay so now if we actually this has to be done for any kind of data that you generate out of your experiment you need to see what kind of distribution our data data has okay this can be done using any uh, software but also using excel now how using excel i'll show it so we are interested to look at different limits bin limits so this data may have limits like 
3 to 3.5 feet, 3.5 to 4 feet, 4 to 4.5, 4.5 to 5, 5.5 to 6, and 6.5 to 7. Okay. Now we need to see within these limits, bean limits, where my data falls. So uh, we have to first first of all define these bean limits. Okay. And then we need to get the frequencies. How to get the frequency? We need to just type equal to and frequency. Okay. Once you do, once you write equal to and frequency, put a bracket and followed by data array, uh, comma beans array. So what is the data array? Data array starts from column A, uh, cell two to cell forty nine, because we have forty eight data points. Okay, comma beans array starts from three feet to seven feet. Okay, and then you can so now you see here so what you obtained is you obtained the frequency for your data you obtained frequency for your data like how many uh, data points are there for height 3 it's only 0 okay for 3.5 it is 0 for 4 feet only 1 4.5 it's 3, 5 feet it is 12, 5.5 it is 18, 6 it is 12, 6.5 it is 2, okay, and 7 it is 0. Now we are interested to see whether my data has normal distribution or not. Even with the uh, frequency distribution, we can observe, but most of the times we are interested in the uh, graph. So we can insert a graph like scatter plot, okay, and see this. So you can observe from the data itself and from the graph also that our data has a normal distribution. Okay, it is a bell shaped curve. You can even change, you can even change the layout, design of the data, change the data type, and you will see that this columns will also show you frequency distribution, which is actually normal distribution. Okay, so this is a data which is normally distributed with a little bit of skewness. Okay. However, the data is uh, perfectly suitable for the uh, uh, test of significance using any normally distributed uh, tools. Okay. So this kind of analysis uh, is essentially required for any data that you generate out of your experiment. Okay. So you need to see how your data is actually presented, how it is distributed. Okay. Now, uh, look at the uh, PowerPoint here. So when we read our data, when we read our data, we need to have the, we need to have the understanding of the distribution of the data that can be obtained by uh, using the command frequency followed by data array and bin array, and we can plot the graph, okay? So now once we plotted the graph here, we can uh, see that, okay, our data is normally distributed and it is suitable for uh, any kind of uh, test. Okay. Again, not only this, we need, we also need to have more analysis to understand the data summary. So we need to ask Excel. Okay. We need to ask the Excel about the data analysis and descriptive statistics. Okay. Similarly, SPSS, where we can ask SPSS to explore the descriptive statistics. How can we do it? We can just do it by uh, a simple commands, okay, that I, I'll, I'll just show you here. So for this particular data, we can use this command. So we can go to the data option, okay, and in the right corner uh, in the top in the Excel, we can click on the data analysis tool, okay? And this data analysis tool has many options starting from ANOVA, correlation, descriptive statistics, up to t-test and z-test, everything it has. So here we can click on descriptive statistics, okay? 
and once we ask for discrete twist statistics it will ask us the input range so we can give input range now our input range starts from uh, column a okay and it ends up to uh, cell number 49 it ends up to cell number 49 okay and we will ask the output range on this excel sheet itself anywhere okay and once you click okay once you click okay it will give you summary statistics for your data okay now this is the summary statistics what it has given us it has given us for the data mean is equal to 5.24 standard error is 0 0.07 median is 5.2 mode is 5.1 standard deviation is 0.51 variance is 0.26 and so on so you can select as many options as possible starting from kurtosis skewness range minimum maximum everything and you can obtain the uh, statistics for your data so this can be done using spaces also this can be done using excel also okay so i am showing you mostly excel options because excel is uh, uh, easily available everywhere okay So now, uh, when we uh, when we when we have good idea about the uh, data structure and its uh, properties, we can have we can have a look at measures of central tendency for the data. Okay. Now, these measures of central tendency are basically mean, median, and mode. So, what is mean? Mean is sum of all the observations divided by the number of observations. Or there is some issue. So mean is basically nothing but it is it is the average of the total number of uh, uh, data samples we have. Okay, so we can get some of all the observations you have in your data and divide it by the number of observations. Another measure of central tendency is median, which is defined as the middle of the distribution in a ranked data. Okay, and third is the mode, which is most frequently occurring variable in the distribution. So for our data, for the 48 women height data, you can see that we have a mean of 5.25, median of 5.2, and mode of 5.1. Okay, and can we do it manually? Yes, we can do it manually. Suppose you have a data set of four, five, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now for this particular data set, you can get mean by just summation of all these data points divided by the number of data points that you have. So it is basically 44 divided by seven, you get 6.29. What is the median for this data? You need to pick up the mid value by, first of all, you need to assort the data in ascending or descending order, followed by picking up the choosing or choosing the mid value. So in this particular data, six is the that, uh, data point which is placed at the medium. Okay, so that, that that is why six is median for this data. Then what is mode? Mode is the most frequently occurring data point in your data set. So in this particular data set, five is repeated twice, and that is why we, we consider five as the mode. Now we have already seen that using Excel descriptive statistics, we already obtain all these kind of uh, uh, measures of central tendency. Not only this, but also there are some other other uh, uh, options to understand the spread of the data, such as range. So range will give you minimum and maximum difference in the minimum and maximum. Okay, variance. So variance it shows you how close a particular individual's observation or data point clusters around the mean okay so it tells you about the spread of the data similarly standard deviation standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance okay and we know that uh, uh, if you if we have good understanding of the variance and standard deviation of the data we can understand whole data structure itself now how to get this variance then 
okay so uh, let me tell you english term for variance is variation okay so variation to understand variation in any kind of data you should have good understanding of the statistical concept of the variance okay now how to get the variance variance is nothing but uh, it's 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 is a spread of the data okay it's spread of the data around the mean okay so how to get the spread of the data around the mean we need to uh, obtain the mean for the data average for the data okay and then deduct this particular average of the data from each and every individual observation okay once you get these differences you need to square them and sum them okay once you obtain summation of squared differences for the uh, mean and the individual observation you can divide it by n minus 1 so total if you have five 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 numbers you can get uh, n minus 1 as 4 and you can get the variance so for the data set that we have here is 56489 whose uh, mean is 6.4 we can deduct or minus this 6.4 from each of the data point okay you can square them and sum them divided by 4 so we can get variance as 4.3 okay once you get variance as 4.3 you can uh, get its square root which is uh, standard deviation which is 2.07 now how to obtain this particular aspects this particular statistics using excel using excel you can just type variance var and followed by the data so you you will have your data spread in your excel sheet you can use that data with the command is equal to variance okay you can obtain the variance at the same time you can just write down is equal to stdev stdev which is standard deviation and again the range of the data okay apart from that we we have another uh, 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 measure which is coefficient of variation this is nothing but the relative standard deviation rsd and it is the sample standard deviation expressed as percentage of the mean so we need to get first of all the uh, standard deviation divided divided by the mean and multiply it with the 100 so for our data which was 56489 the coefficient of variation is 2.07 which is standard deviation divided by mean which is 6.4 so we get for our data cv of 32% which is a sizable amount now once we have good understanding about our data structure and its distribution then we can look at the statistical significance okay so why the statistical significance is first of all required it is required to know if the difference between two groups exist or not okay whether my treatment worked or not if you are conducting an experiment on two groups of mice okay you are giving to one group you are you are, you are giving just placebo another group you are giving some treatment then it is very essential to understand whether my treatment is actually working or not for that particular purpose we need to we need to have a hypothesis first of all what is hypothesis hypothesis is idea or the explanation proposed explanation based on the limited facts okay we can generate some facts from the literature okay that particular drug should work okay drug a b c may have its impact on the treatment of cancer so you may have this kind of hypothesis now we you need to check this hypothesis whether my hypothesis is correct or not so to check our hypothesis we need to have some test with good stringency okay so that your experiment should not fail okay now once you are okay with it you need to construct a null hypothesis null hypothesis is basically a negative statement which tells you that there is no association between the phenomena whose relation is under test like suppose you have a drug to be tested you say that my drug do not have any impact on a particular uh, for a particular disease so this is a null hypothesis that means we, we we what we mean to say that if if you have two different groups one group with the uh, placebo another group with the uh, particular drug then we say that my drug and placebo are equal there is no difference between my drug and the placebo okay so that is a null hypothesis and then we have alternate hypothesis which says that my null hypothesis is wrong okay if 
test of statistical significance tells you that there is huge difference between the uh, samples where you have given a treatment and with, uh, with the sample where you have given placebo, there is huge difference in the outcome, then your null hypothesis is rejected and you accept the alternate hypothesis. Okay. So once you, you are clear with this, we, we should also have a good understanding of degrees of freedom because for any test of significance, you need to have degrees of freedom. Okay. What is degrees of freedom? Now degrees of freedom is the number of independent pieces of information available to estimate another piece of information. So this is a definition, but what does it mean actually? So let me tell you, suppose you have three data points, okay? You have three data points and you know that the average of all these three data points is nine, okay? Average of all these three data points is nine. You also know that first two data are seven and 12, okay? You also know that first two data points are seven and 12. Then what is the th third data point? The third data point is eight. Why? Because if you already know average of your data, and if you know two data points, then you do not have choice for the third data point, okay? Third data, that is eight, doesn't have freedom to vary. It cannot vary. However, first two data points can vary. Okay, so for my data with three observations, degrees of freedom is two minus one. Okay, three minus one, so two. So for my data, if I have three observations, the degrees of freedom is three minus one. Similarly, for most of the data sets, we have if, 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 if I'm interested to obtain only one estimate, like me, I can have n minus one degrees of freedom. Because when mean is fixed, I can vary all other variables except one, okay? If I want two estimates, then n minus two, okay? So similarly, degrees of freedom, it is the number of degrees of freedom is the number of values in the final calculation of a statistics that are free to vary, okay? So if you have n number of observations, n minus one number of observations have freedom to vary. However, one observation will not have freedom to vary. Okay, so this is how degrees of freedom needs to be interpreted. Okay, so for our data, degrees of freedom is two. Now, we are clear with the degrees of freedom. We are clear with the distribution of the data. We are clear with the hypothesis response. Okay, but, we should be also clear with the level of significance. Why? Because whenever you are applying a particular test of significance, we should also have a good idea about what is the level of significance at which you want to test your hypothesis. Okay? Suppose you have a two, you have, you have two groups of mice in which you are, you are testing one drug with a placebo, then you should have good confidence to test your significance level for a given hypothesis. Okay? So, Significance level for a given hypothesis test is nothing but a p-value that is less than or equal to the alpha, okay? And what is this alpha? So alpha can be considered as 10%, 5%, or 1%, depending on how stringent you want your experiment to be, okay? So for 1%, alpha can be 0 0.01. For 5%, it is 0 0.05. And for 10%, it is 0.5. One. Okay. Now these particular values corresponds to the probability of observing such an extreme value by chance. So if your experiment fails, you may find that some of your values fall in this particular category. Okay. So we keep our stringency level very high, usually in the uh, drug testing ex experiments, usually in the uh, experiments which are related to physics, astronomy, something like that. But in the psychology or uh, human studies, we, we do not keep sub, such stringent levels because their degrees of freedom, uh, their, their, their uh, level of significance is uh, not that high. Okay, so we usually test our hypothesis at, at five or 10% level of significance. So, especially if you go for T distribution, critical values of T test, we can have degrees of freedom, uh, that is the first column. We can have, we can have significance level uh, on the, uh, right on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the top. So maybe 10% or 5%, 5% or 2% or 1%, something like that. 
and depending on what degrees of freedom you have for your data and what is the significance level at which you want to test your data you can look at the tabulated value so if your calculated t value is more than the tabulated value you can say that your differences are significant so once we are clear with this then we can design experiment okay so in an experiment design of experiment basically we have a control group and we have a test group okay like a, a group of mice where you are giving nothing or placebo and a group of mice where you are testing your drug for cancer probably okay so you have two different groups so control group versus the test group you have a null hypothesis you say that there is no difference for body now suppose you have uh, males and females in this room and then we say that okay there are there is no difference between the males versus females in this room for their body weight okay so mean for males is equal to mean for females mu1 is equal to mu2 and it is possible that your null hypothesis is wrong so you already consider another hypothesis which is alternate hypothesis you say that males are heavier than females okay so mu1 is more than mu2 or mu1 is not equal to mu2 okay so we keep we keep the stringency levels of p value like 1% or 5% as the criteria for testing our hypothesis so for any design of experiment we have a control group we have a test group we have a null hypothesis we have an alternate alternate hypothesis and then we test our hypothesis at stringency level of 1 or 5% okay now usually for the data that we have discussed like comparing height of males versus females or uh, comparing two groups of mice with with and with, without treatment we go for t test okay sometimes t test is one sample where we compare mean of the sample with the population mean okay sometimes our data is unpaired so there are two different groups okay and we we simultaneously have experiments in two different groups and we want to compare the results or we have a paired group so same group of animals we give treatment after some period we give another treatment so t test basically compares means between the two samples okay now say for example this data so we have a group a and we have group b we can get the differences okay um, and you can look at this particular table so how to get the t test then so obtaining a t test is very very easy we can get difference between the means of group a and group b and divide it by the standard error okay for these two groups so once you do this you can get the t statistics which is here in, for this particular data it is minus 7.15 and you can compare this t calculated value with the t tabulated value once you do this you can understand okay my tabulated value or uh, calculated value is higher than the tabulated value that means differences between these two groups are highly significant okay so what i will do is i will just uh, uh, share my excel file again okay i'll share my excel file again and we can uh, yeah it is shared so it is it is shared and we will just look at the t test okay using the excel so see here uh, that we have two groups group a and group b okay i hope you can you can uh, observe it okay so we have two groups group a and group b and these two groups we need to compare for t test okay so we can go to data we can go to data analysis option okay and we can go to the t test paired two sample for mean okay so paired two sample for mean okay now it will ask us what is the range for the variable one so we can group a is the range for variable one okay what is the range for variable two now this is the group b for variable two okay and uh, we have data levels here and what is the uh, output range output range is here okay once you do this you just need to click okay and you obtain these statistics here now you see here that for these two different data groups okay we have com we have compared them for the means because this is paired two samples for means okay we have mean for group 
A and group B, we obtain their variances also, and we have ten observations for each of the group. However, because this is paired t-test, we considered two observations for two groups as one observation on a pair. Okay, so the degrees of freedom is basically ten minus one. Okay, it is nine. Okay, and the t-statistics is minus seven point one five, and significance at one one percent. Okay. Significance uh, for one tail and significance for two tail is two point six into e to the power minus zero five. So that means zero point zero 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 two six eight. So differences between group A and group B are highly significant. Okay. So based on the statistics of t test for the paired sample t test, we can say here that differences between these two groups are highly significant okay so probably group b is given a treatment and group a is not given treatment then we can say that okay the mean of group b has been significantly influenced by the treatment that you have given okay if this p is non significant then only we can say that okay the differences does not exist now this can be done not only for the paired sample t test but it can be also done for uh, like uh, t test for Two samples assuming equal or the unequal variances. However, when we assume equal or the unequal variances, what will happen? We can select our data for group one. We can select our data for uh, variable two. Okay, and uh, we can ask for output range here. And uh, sorry, group one. we can ask for output range which is here right and that's it so now you see here we we obtain some difference what is the difference difference is if i'm if i'm assuming that my both of the samples have equal variances okay then this is basically unpaired okay once it is unpaired i have 10 observations in group 1 n observations in group 2 so degrees of freedom for group 1 is 9 degrees of freedom for group 2 is 9 so total degrees of freedom are 18 okay and i see here that their variances also differ okay and the statistics that, that i obtain for uh, assuming equal variances minus 5.20 which is more because see whenever we compare these statistics no you do you should not you should not take into consideration the sign of the statistics okay you should just take its um uh, its absolute value it is 5.20 which is higher than the critical value in the table and that is why our uh, p value is highly significant so we say that group 1 or group a differs significantly from group 2 okay however if you go for uh, uh using the same data if you, if you want to apply spss software for this you need to rearrange your data okay how to rearrange in that case you can just copy this data and put here okay and you can just write down 1111111 and 2222222 okay so here this is your uh this is your group okay and this is your data okay now you need to rearrange your data likewise once you are rearranging your data like like this you can import this data to spss i am not importing it purposefully because i am observing some network issues but if time permits we will try that also okay so we can import this data to uh, to the uh, spss and there you can uh, just see uh, uh, you can you can just go to, to, to go to the option analyze and from the analyze you can go to the compare means option where you can add the dependent and independent variables and that's it okay so again so this is how we we will do the t test now what if there are two or more than two groups if there are two groups to come to 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 be compared then we can uh, definitely go for the t test but sometimes it happens that more than two groups are available for comparison like you have a control group you have drug 1 you 
you have drug two, you have drug three. So you have different types of drugs and you have a control group. Now you want to compare between all of them. Okay, so if you have more than two samples or if you have more than two groups, then you cannot apply t-test. Okay, so and you also know that between group effect variance is due to the treatment given. So how to get that? So for obtaining that particular thing, you need to go for F test. So Fisher's test, ANOVA. Okay. So here the F test is nothing but MSB divided by MSW. So MSB is the mean squares between the groups, and MSW is the mean squares within the groups. Now, because we most of us or all of us are veterinarians, let me tell you one one very good example. Example is you want to compare five different sires for their milk yield performance. We know that sires do not give milk, okay? But we need to compare them for their milk yield. So how to compare? So what we do? Each sire is mated to different females and then those females produce daughters. So each sire will have some five daughters. So five daughters under each sire. So these five daughters will produce milk and then their average is compared for the sire, okay? So now here you can see that uh, there is a difference within the sire, okay? MSW, so difference within the sire. So difference within the sire is nothing but difference between the daughters of the same sire. And then there is difference between the sire. So difference between the sires is different between the five different sires, okay? So likewise, we can get here MSB upon MSW, and you can compare the variance between two or more than two samples. Okay, so this particular data set where we have a sample X, sample Y, and sample Z, and again, control sample, we can get the ANOVA, okay? So I'm not going into details of it. I'll share this, already I've shared the PowerPoint. So you can look at the data and you can calculate variance uh, and an F test, and you can go for the ANOVA, okay? Uh, by yourself itself okay so this is the procedure basically so how, our null hypothesis was there is no difference between the means of treatment one two three and control okay so we 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 said that that means do are are almost equal however we we also had a alternate hypothesis where we said that means are not equal okay how to obtain the ms the f test f test is msb upon msp degrees of freedom because we have four treatments. So for the treatment, we have degrees of freedom as three, and we have total 20 observations, uh, five observations under each group. So we have another degree of freedom. So 16. So accordingly, we can get the overall mean, we can get SSP, we can get SSE, and we can get the uh, F test, okay? So for ANOVA, it is very easy if you if you obtain the sum of squares for between group variances for within groups. If you get the degrees of freedom, then we can get the mean sum of squares. Once you obtain the mean sum of squares, then we can uh, uh, we can also obtain the F statistics. So if you obtain the F statistics, compare these F statistics in the tabulated values. Okay, whether it is higher or lower at particular degrees of freedom and particular level of significance. Okay. If my calculated value is higher than the tabulated value at a particular level of significance, then we can say, okay, there are, there are differences which exist between the groups. Okay, now there are different types of ANOVA basically. One is the two way ANOVA. Okay, now two way ANOVA compares between treatment one versus treatment two versus treatment three. Now, what is the example? If I want to compare marks of students for three different subjects like Hindi, versus English, versus maths, okay? I can also have two-way without replication, okay? Like I can compare treatment one and treatment two for individual one, individual two, and individual three, okay? Now, the same example we can repeat here, like there are marks for different number of students, okay? And there are marks for different subjects, okay? So now here we can compare marks for the student as well as marks for the subject. 
another thing is we may also have a two way with replication so two way with replication is what two way with replication is we have two different groups okay and we want to compare these two different groups for the replicates that they have usually usually in the uh, 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 in the biological experiments we always have uh, some of the data some or the, some or the other, other data with replicates okay and those replicates needs to be compared okay so using excel i'll just try to show you how to go for anova using single factor using two factors and with and without replication okay now here we have uh, 10 different students probably or 10 different samples okay animals and we have uh, observations for the control we have observation for the treatment 1 and we have observation for the treatment 2 okay now we can go to data we can ask for data analysis and we can go for anova single factor okay once we have anova single factor we can it will ask you what is the input range you can just fill the input range starting from control to treatment 1 and treatment 2 which are grouped by columns and we have labels in the first row what is the alpha we keep alpha as 0.05 okay you can change it to 0.01 or 0.0 uh, whatever whatever uh, stringency level you want to keep you can select a, a range for output and click okay so now you see here for this particular data set you have control treatment 1 and treatment 2 you have their count some average and variances and then you have analysis of variance now here you can compare it between the treatments so you also get a f critical value which is 3.35 and you obtain the p value which is 1.4 into e to the power minus 09 that means 0 point followed by nine zeros and then 144 so difference between the groups are highly significant okay very highly significant so control differs from treatment 1 treatment 1 differs from treatment 2 they are highly significant okay not only this if we go for a uh, two factor without replication okay so one factor is student another factor is subject okay one factor is student another factor is subject okay and there are marks so how to do how to go for that we can again ask our data analysis tool two factor without replication okay so you, you have different options there you can select two factor without replication what is the input range now this is the input range okay you select it here you select the output range okay and that's it mm, yeah that's it so results are like this here now you see here you got summary for your all seven students okay what is their count so every student had uh, given three exams okay and what is the average and what is the variance and again for the three different subjects we have seven observations each because we have seven students so there are two different factors however they, they, they were not replicated they were not replicated okay and then we obtain the f critical value for rows which is students and the columns which is subject you can see here degrees of freedom 6 for students 7 minus 1 2 for subjects 3 minus 1 okay and the p value we see here that for the uh, student the p value is non significant it is 0.48 less than 0.05 okay more than 0.05 so it is non significant saying that there are no differences between the students for the marks they obtained okay similarly for the Uh, subjects again it is 0.0589 so again it doesn't uh, means it, it doesn't pass our stringency level it is 0.0589 so 5.8% however our stringent c alpha level was 0.05 so in both the cases the hypothesis null hypothesis is accepted and alternate hypothesis rejected so there are there is no difference for the marks obtained between the subjects or there is no difference for the marks obtained between these two we can also have 
another kind of design where you have two different groups like group a and group b okay like maybe society a versus society b if you have uh, marks for two different subjects and you have students residing in society a or village a versus village b okay or you can have uh, maybe a treatment versus control okay from a group of uh, maybe maybe two different groups okay so here you can have replicates okay or even you you can have a, a replicate uh, maybe any any petri plates which are replicated five different times okay uh, for treatment one and treatment two similarly another group replicated five different times okay so here again you can go for data data analysis and you can ask for two factor with replication you can select the input range like this okay and uh, what is the rows per sample rows per sample are five and what is the output range you can just click here the output range and that's it okay now you can see here we obtain the uh, summary statistics we obtain the counts and we obtain the anova okay so we obtain the summary for t1 and t2 we obtain summary for group a and group b and we obtain the anova and you can see here for uh, samples for the columns and for the interactions we obtain the critical value of as well as we obtain the p value and from this data we can say that samples differ from each other because p value is 0.04 which is less than 0.05 so differences between the samples are highly significant okay differences between the columns okay so treatment 1 and treatment 2 are again highly significant okay so they differ from each other however because this was replication we also obtain their interaction interaction between the columns and the rows is non significant because it is 0.78 okay so accordingly we can uh, we can actually see for any uh, kind of uh, data so whatever data you have you can just uh, look at the data understand what kind of uh, uh, design it, it requires and you can go for the um, uh, anova sometimes what happens you have a frequency data or categorical data okay now if you have categorical data or frequency data you cannot go for anova so in such circumstances you can go for chi square test or you can go for logistic regression which is extension of the chi square test like anova okay and you can compare the frequencies and test whether your observation differs from the uh, your expectation so you might have heard about the famous uh, experiment by uh, mendel okay father of genetics so what mendel did he bred some of the pea pea plants and he, he could uh, test the uh, uh, ratio okay whether my whether the seeds that are obtained from are uh, are falling in a particular pattern or not okay so he had a particular set of expectations and he had a particular set of observations and then he could match it okay but he didn't have the test of significance chi square test to prove it okay that was his bad luck now we have okay so here what we can do it's very simple chi square test is very simple we can just Uh, propose a hypothesis that there is no difference between the observed values and expected values so how to test that we can just subtract the expectations from the observations square them and sum them and divide it by the observations so it's it's very easy okay even using excel you can do it uh, i'll not show it show it here just now okay so that is uh, that is the that is for the frequency distribution data now apart from that there are certain uh, aspect in the statistics where you need to associate one particular thing with the another particular thing. okay you need to see how what how how, how many uh, means to what degree two different observations are uh, basically uh, going together so correlation means if there are two different observation there are two different groups of observation you need to see how closely they are related so if one group is increasing whether second group is also increasing with that or not okay or if one group is decreasing second group is also decreasing with that or not okay so that is the kind of correlation we want to see another thing is the regression what is regression regression means to go back okay 
But regression, what, what does it indicate for us, for, for statisticians? Here we need to see if I have certain factors which actually influence my observation. So to what degree my inputs are actually affecting my output, okay? Say for example, there is a nutritional experiment, okay? There is a nutrition experiment and you want to see effect of two or three different uh, feed additives on growth. Okay, in such a case, you can have independent observations of these three different additives and you can have a dependent observation of growth. And then you can get a regression coefficient for each of your feed additive with respect to one unit change in the growth. Okay, so for such a study where you want to predict something, okay, based on your independent variables, you can use regression equation, which looks like y is equal to a plus bx plus e. Now, what is correlation? Correlation is nothing but the degree of association between two or more than two variables. It can range from minus one to plus one because correlation can be negative as well as it can be positive. Okay, and it shows you how my one variable is associated with my second variable. We can obtain a correlation coefficient. We can obtain a coefficient of determination. Okay. What is regression? Regression is the cause and effect relationship basically. Okay. It will show you how my independent variable is related to the dependent variable. If I change one unit my, in my independent variable, how it is going to affect my dependent variable? Like the same example, if you have a plot of land, if you have planted some uh, uh, maybe wheat or jar, and if you are varying NPK uh, fertilizers, you can have a regression equation for one unit change in N, one unit change in P, one unit change in K, and how many unit change in the wheat yield. Okay, so you can estimate unit change in dependent variable that can be as good as true as for, for this example, but it can be also true for uh, like change in the milk yield with respect to change of season or change of year maybe, or change in the milk yield or growth with respect to the change in the feed additives, okay, or any drug. So you can, you can create a regression equation, okay, based on how much unit change you obtain in the dependent variable if you change one unit in the independent variable. So regression coefficient is, it starts from zero to one or zero to minus one, because again, regression can be negative, it can be positive, because it depends on the direction. You see, not always necessary that one unit change in one leads to one unit change in other in the positive way. It can also lead to negative way, okay? So that's why range is in the both ways. However, we get the coefficient of determination, which is square of the correlation, and its range is zero to one, okay? So uh, here we basically end our uh, PowerPoint presentation, but let me show you some of the, uh, yeah, so we can go for correlation here, okay? So correlation. So again, doing correlation in Excel is very easy. So I have three observations here, variable one, variable two, variable three, okay? And then I can go for data analysis. I can go for correlation and that's it. So it will ask me variable range. So I can do variable range one, two, and three, okay? Uh, I have labels in first row. I can also give the output range, which is here, okay? And that's it. So once I do this, you can see here, we can get the correlation coefficient for variable one with variable two, variable one with variable three, variable two with variable three. You see here that variable one and variable two has a co correlation coefficient of 0.92. Variable one and variable two has coefficient of correlation of minus 0.94, okay? So based on the data, sometimes it is difficult to understand the relationship. But if you use the correlation coefficient, you can have a fine understanding of how your data is actually related to another data set. We can also look for the regression. Now here, suppose this is the dependent variable, maybe milk yield, and this is the independent variable, like variable we have one, we have two, and we have three. So we have three different levels of the variable, maybe doses of the drug, maybe doses of the nitrogen, okay? And this is the output we have, okay? So we can go for data, we can go for data analysis, 
we can ask for regression okay we can ask for regression now here what is your input y range y is always a dependent variable okay what is input x range x is always independent variable okay we have labels in our data confidence level is 95% and we can get output range of yeah you can place anywhere okay once you do this what you obtain is the regression okay now here we get the multiple r which is nothing but the correlation coefficient we get the r square which is the coefficient of determination so coefficient of determination for our data is 0.85 okay so we have very good confidence on our data okay and we get the observations as 10 and this is the anova so anova will tell you that uh, the significance is 0.0001 okay so highly significant our variable has a huge impact on the outcome of the dependent variables and then we get this particular things okay i'll just highlight it so bold and uh, yeah so this is it so 17.43 is the constant okay and 8.84 is the regression coefficient so if you want to construct a equation for this particular data set then i can say y is equal to 17.43 plus 8.84 into what variable okay so this is my regression equation this is my regression equation okay i just make it bigger size yeah so this is my regression equation okay based on the data so for every unit change if i if in in, in space of variable if i keep one it will be 17.43 plus 8.84 if i keep two it will be 17.43 plus 8.84 into 2 and if i keep 3 it will multiply by 3 okay so accordingly we can get the regression equation and we can also have test of significance using f test for the data set especially if you are using regression okay so so here i stop okay uh, i understand that con including everything especially test of statistical significance is not easy in one class but i i try to make you understand the basic concept of the statistics and basic tests that we usually use in in any experimental design and followed by how we can do it in the excel so thank you very much uh, i stop here over to the organizers uh, thank you dr gopal goni sir uh, if participants is having any questions any queries kindly write in the chat box so there was one question that uh, kindly show the calculation of chi square in excel okay yeah so uh, yeah i can show that yeah uh where is it yeah okay I'll, i'm sharing my screen my screen sharing is stop why i don't know dr amit yes sir again it is written that your screen sharing is paused no no sir your your screen sharing has been started i can see here yeah but for me i am seeing that it is written your screen sharing is paused you are sir you are using the same na same laptop na yeah yeah same laptop because you are co-host and co-host can share the screen okay, okay. let me let me try again let me try yes. Oh, not seem. Sir, is it same Excel sheet? Yeah, it's the same Excel sheet. Okay, sir, just open the Excel sheet first. Yeah, already opened it. It's already, already open, na? Now yeah. click on share. Yeah. 
after clicking on share you will see the window and uh, yeah yeah, yeah. There. just select one block any one block which you want to share okay yeah and then lower right side there will be again one share option yeah i am doing that but i don't because your message is reflecting dr gr gawane started sharing this page. yeah yeah that's what the same is seen for me but it is not shown that is the reason maybe stop share i'll try again share screen no i am not able to okay anyway i I'll, i can just tell uh, otherwise also see once you go to excel options okay once you go to excel uh, what you need to do is don't go for data analysis tools okay don't go for data analysis tools you just need to go for uh, it's better to show but i don't know how you just need to go for formula okay once you go to formula there is more functions under the formula so under the more functions you get the statistical function under the statistical function there is chi chi distribution chi inv and chi test so there you have to select the chi test when you select the chi test you need to select the actual range and the expected range and that's it so it is very easy so thing is you do you need not have to go to the data analysis option you just need to go to the formulas followed by statistical formulas and the chi test so that is it uh yeah any other query for uh, sir i'll 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 show that sir i'll try to share yeah Yeah, 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 that is okay. So you can you have to write down some data here first of all under column A. Just write down anything. Yeah, three, four, six, something like that. Three, four, and six. Okay, yeah, that that is enough. That is enough. That is enough. That is enough. So this is your observations. Okay, and column B, column B, you can write down any data, A any data, any data. Yeah. that's it yeah that's it. that's sufficient so we assume that column a is expected value and column b is uh, your observed value so you can go to formulas more functions more functions yeah yeah click on it and statistical and then you can go for chi test c h i t e s t you can go below down yeah down 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 chi square dot test yes that's it click it you can click it and then you can select the actual range just you need to select on the no no yeah you need to click on this particular red button yeah that button yeah and then you can select yeah you, you now you select this column a select the column a yeah range range only range only range only range only range yeah from a1 to a6 yeah from a1 to drag down drag down drag down a1 to that six right and again click on the radio button again click on the radio button here yeah right yes then expected range yeah click here and then you can select this one yes and that's it yeah click here yeah so now you see here you can you can see here it returns the test for independence okay the value for from the chi square distribution for the statistics and the appropriate degrees of freedom now for the data we have entered here it is zero okay it is zero and uh, reason is our data is not proper basically but anyway this is how we we need to do this once you click okay you get the result just click okay and this is the chi square statistics which is zero in case of this particular data okay okay so yeah. another query i i obtained is uh, about degrees of freedom so somebody is asking me to uh, yeah degrees of freedom so let me tell you degrees of freedom 
you can take it literally okay you can take it literally what is mean by degrees of freedom if you have five observations i want mean or average for this five observations one of the observation is my mean okay or i cannot move one particular observation because my mean is fixed already i can vary all other four observations but fifth observation is not under my control it is in the control of the estimate it is in the control of the mean okay i can change all other fours except one so that is degree of freedom so i have freedom to vary four observations out of five so for every estimate usually we have freedom to vary all other values except one that is why mostly our degrees of freedom is n minus 1 yeah any other query yeah again the standard deviation and standard error so see standard deviation divided by root n is the standard error basically but let me tell you when we talk about the population it is standard deviation which is of importance when you talk talk about the samples it is standard error which is of importance and it the both of them tells you how your data is distributed around the mean okay they, that, that is the only uh, that is the only use it has there is one question uh, somebody asked that if he is going to analyze milk protein milk fat and milk carbohydrate okay so the data is in percentage yeah so how should he transform the data see whenever percentage data is there most data is skewed okay because you will have some percentage ranging from 40 to 60 40 to 80 is skewed if okay. your percentage distribution is normal you can directly go for normal distributed test however if it is skewed and mostly for percentage data you should go for arc sign transformation arc sin okay that option is already available in excel you can just google you can see good thing with the excel is whatever test you want to apply okay just google okay you ask for arc sign transformation using excel it will tell you step by step how to go for that okay so percentage data can be transformed to arc sign distribution then that arc sign distribution is usually normally distributed you can apply t test or chi square t test or uh, anova on that particular uh, data which is transformed somebody asked is there any difference in writing capital p and small p for p value uh, no it uh, it depends on the user basically usually we write small p values okay usually we write small p values so these these are all notations so if you define it properly you can use anything somebody asked that uh, somewhere it is written standard error and sometime it is written sem standard error of mean what is the See, difference yeah uh, for most of the people who are working in the nutrition yes. they 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 get lot of confusion about sem and se let me tell you standard error is always for the mean so sem is standard error of mean standard error is also standard error of mean but it depends on the kind of presentation that you are making okay sometimes you have one big population and you have uh, four to five sub populations in that or sub classes in that so what will we will have we will have a uh, population mean and its standard error which is standard error for the whole population standard error for the mean of the population and then you have sub classes their means and their standard errors okay so that standard error for different classes will vary but standard error for the mean of the whole population will not vary it will be same okay so it depends on what you want okay whether you want sub classes mean with the standard error which is standard error for the mean or you if you want sem for the whole population mean that is the only difference otherwise there is no difference in that uh, one question is regarding how to decide to go one tail or two tail yeah it depends on uh, it's very logical question basically usually it depends on the person who is conducting the experiment okay now suppose i am feeding my cattle feeding my cattle with some uh, some maybe uh, maybe something okay which increases body weight okay then what tail should i look at i should look at only one tail okay anyway my feeding of animal is going to increase the weight it's not going to decrease the weight okay so by data will go towards only one tail not on the other tail probably okay so it depends on 
uh, what kind of uh, uh, means what kind of experiment you are doing but let me tell you again whether one tail or two tail is basically same thing so you sum up two tails on both the side it will be one tail for the one side so if you are if you are testing your hypothesis for 5% level of significance on one tail is 2.5% on the right side 2.5% on the left side okay so mostly we should go for i i am not, not suggesting you but usually we we go for one tail okay only one is there any specific range for cv no because when standard deviation is greater than greater than mean it will be greater than 100% yeah but yeah that that's that's true but uh, cv is in percentile okay so we restrict it up to 100 it can 